right here. Oh yeah, this is my 2007 Honda Ridgeline. Okay, well you know what? Tell us more. Two dope boys and. So yeah, this is the Honda Ridgeline. I bought this um, on the more affluent side of town in Gwinnett County. I got it for a really cheap rate. Um, it was low mileage. It only had about 40 to 50,000 miles on it. Maybe about five or six years old when I purchased it. Great condition, nothing wrong with it. Did an inspection on it. Um, what, I, what I learned is when you're buying a used car, buy on the affluent side, because they have six or seven cars they drive. So the one car that you purchase is actually going to be in good condition because it's just been sent somewhere uh, right, with right. good maintenance on it. That so makes yeah, sense. So yeah, this truck right here, now it, we're at 180,000 miles. Um, I pretty much uh, don't drive it as much as I used to because of the pandemic. Now with the pandemic, I work from home. Um, working from home has allowed me to save a lot of money on gas, a lot of maintenance, a lot of money in the maintenance on the truck as well. So. Um, yeah, the truck is, uh, uh, it seats five. As okay. you can see, it seats uh, two in the front, three in the back. Um, right. Very spacious, very good for our road trips. I have two storage containers, uh, two storage areas for the truck. Uh, we got one up under here where I keep, of course, tools, keep uh, uh, bungees, because I uh, teach tumbling too. So I use this right. truck also to uh, carry my mats and everything on when I'm going to tumbling class or going to different remote locations to teach. Um, the other part of the truck is in the back. Let me get the keys and I can show y'all that. Okay. The cool thing about the truck also is the, the back uh, gate. It swings two ways, so it swings this way. And also, if you come on the bottom, swing this way also oh, but wow. I'm married so I only swing one way I know we in Atlanta <laughs> but I don't swing two way you feel me <laughs> so this is the back truck the bed is pretty um the bed is pretty big um one thing I will say uh they don't really make a tool uh tool back that goes onto this because this is the older model with the wedge or the slope siding right so because of that i'm not able to uh, put anything on here unless i custom have it built okay so that's why i keep the tools up under the uh, keep the tools up under the seat other part we got storage back here big oh, enough man. for a full size spare big enough for our coolers can put stuff uh, down here if you're going out on a cookout or anything like that not sure if the new model uh, ridge lines has this feature they may, they may not. I'm not sure. I haven't done any research because, once again, I'm trying to keep this as long as possible. Get off the grid, you know? Yeah, that's pretty damn cool. That guy. Swing it back. All right, let's see what you got under the hood. Check out the hood for you. Anything cool than the interior is pretty much basic. Interior is super duper basic. Um, this is so old, of course, it doesn't even have Bluetooth capabilities. Yeah. So we went on ahead and uh, made it simple by one of these guys, and now I, ha I can hook up to the Bluetooth through the radio station. Bet. So that's how it's adaptable for the older models. Gotcha. Still have a CD player. A lot of new model cars don't have CD players. It's about to be a thing of the past. All hey, street. that's that's lossless quality. We can look up under the hood. Agent is still running good condition. Um, 
surprisingly, uh, battery. I haven't had to change the battery out much as, uh, at all. Don't have any corrosion on the battery. Um, a lot of the cars I had before, especially even dealing with Honda, uh, my Honda Accords, they yeah. always would get corrosion around the uh, positive and negative of the batteries. They got a what, a cool air intake? That's the uh, cool air intake, yep. Oh. That was placed on there uh, when I, three years after I bought the vehicle, had to get a new one of those. All right. So yeah, try to keep it as clean as possible. I need to blow this guy out, parking under trees and stuff when I actually do drive it. All right. All right, so let's go for a ride. Safety first. Yeah, you got to. Especially with all these nun drivers. <laughs> Atlanta is the melting pot of drivers. Of nun drivers. Of nun drivers. I tell everybody all the time that Atlanta's full of individuals from different places that drive like they did wherever they're from. So because of that, you got people, uh, not driving on the same accord. Right. Nobody's in alignment. Everybody's driving how they would normally drive. Right. Instead of adapting to uh, a new city and a new way of driving. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, you know, Phil, tell us more about yourself. I know I, I know you, but, you know, the rest of the world don't. So, pretty much, I'm an Atlanta native. Um, I've lived all over. I've lived in Cleveland Avenue. I've lived in East Point. Uh, and currently I live uh, downtown Atlanta. Um, I did everything here. I went to high school here, graduated uh, from Clark Atlanta University in 2006, degree in, degree in civil engineering. Um, I've pretty much been working now in uh, civil engineering for uh, 16 years in different sectors. Worked in residential commercial design, uh, I worked in industrial design as well as military work. Now I currently work in environmental design. So. On a daily basis, I'm designing and maintaining the pipes that uh, that uh, help facilitate us getting water, drinking water, as well as wastewater treatment plants. Right, right. So how how people drink, uh, it just doesn't come uh, all willy nilly, or it just doesn't come out the ground. It's actually a process uh, that is involved with everybody having adequate and substantial, sustainable drinking water. Right, right. So, so you were saying for our, our women viewers, you could fix their pipes? Uh, I would if I was single. <laughs> so I'm also married. <laughs> I've been married now for 12 years. Uh, married now for 12 years. Been in a relationship with my wife for 14 years. We have two beautiful kids. So, but it's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of uh, 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 friends. I have a lot of friends in Atlanta that could definitely help. Uh, fix their pipes so. <laughs> Anything about yourself that a lot of people don't know um, Along with being an engineer um, I'm actually I actually have a background in uh, gymnastics and what that background has allowed me to do is uh, Perform all over the world in different acrobatic arenas whether I've done the circus before I've done what's called acrobatic slam dunking, where I work with uh, NBA uh, shows, NBA games, as well as NCAA games, and we do halftime shows as well as um, timeouts during the, uh, during the game operations. Okay. Did, did you have a nickname? Uh, yeah, I actually did. My uh, dunk name, I went by a couple of them. My first one was Skyscraper. Okay. Um, and then I, I, I evolved from Skyscraper to Hybrid, so that's my current dunk name hybrid okay okay and that brings up you you also got a gymnastics company too right yeah i have a, a non-profit business of 501c3 it's called hybrid humans where we teach tumbling uh in atlanta we'll actually come to your camp come to your uh, daycare and we teach people of all ages we actually teach adults also so you're never too uh up in age to learn something new and learn something new about your body. It's, it's all about uh, the mind. Once you conquer the mind, you can call, conquer the physical. That's right. So for all our viewers, whoever leaves the best comment, you're gonna teach them about the flips. Oh, of course. Yeah, I got them. <laughs> I got them. Let me know, man. Hybrid Humans, we're on Instagram. Hybrid Humans, I-N-C. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So let's see, um, we covered your, your education. You know what, I think a lot of people don't know uh, 
we spoke about this with another good friend of mine is the Atlanta public school systems. Well, you know, you, you went to Tri-Cities. Yes, right? which is in Fulton, Fulton County. County. Okay, okay. But now my kids are actually in APS. They're in the Atlanta public school systems. Okay. And it's, it's interesting you uh, bring that up because a lot of people who uh, move to Atlanta or stray from moving to Atlanta is because of the school system. When in actuality, the school systems are getting a lot better in Atlanta. And it's mainly because uh, uh, government funding is getting a, a little bit more uh, lucrative for the right. school systems, right. as well as, to be honest with you, it's a, part of it's the gentrification. People right. are uh, moving in that were the uh, original demographics of black and brown people in Atlanta. And now they are starting to do more with, into the schools and the schools are getting a lot better. Right. Um, so yeah, I think it's all about, um, you know, a lot of times people say, uh, I don't want to put my kids in a certain school system because it's not up to par. Same thing with me growing up. Everybody said Fulton County was not up to par. Tri-Cities wasn't up to par. But at the same time, I end up graduating uh, with a degree in engineering and working in an environment where I'm going to school with people who went to MIT, Berkeley, and all uh, types of places around the country. Right, right, right. And that's one thing I always gave notice or recognition to is you know, as bad as people said Atlanta Public Schools was, we made it out. Exactly. Right, and we made it out, and we made it out in a way that, like you said, our peers went to all the top institutions, and we're right there with them. Same place. So we, you know, for, for people to talk down about it, it's, it's like, eh, it, it's, 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 it's what you make out of the situation, it's right? what you make, exactly. I could have been nothing, but I chose not to. You know, and I and I, it's it's the same system, the same teachers, the same counselors. You know that I always got to give my props and respect to. You know, so yeah, definitely, man. And I know we we go back to Pet Bridge Engineering Program over there, <laughs> Atlanta Metropolitan College. That's where I, I met you at, and. You know, it Which is, is now one of the top rated uh, community colleges in the country. See, I didn't even know that. You know, that's that's just awesome, man. You know, just to see what this community has become and accomplished. But those were things that was, you know, even back in our day. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, we had to find those resources that, has, that had, had to have someone push us towards it. You know, which uh, kind of sucks for some of the folks that didn't get that guidance. Right. But I'm I'm grateful for that, you know, guidance I received and the opportunities. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely a cohesiveness of not only um, uh, of a, a willingness and a drive of wanting to get out there and make something out of ourselves, but having somebody in our corner, whether it's a family member, a mother, an aunt, a cousin, a father, somebody that's going to um, help guide us and keep us on that right path, or even a teacher, a dedicated teacher also. Right. So it takes a village, it takes a community. Right. And I will say, you know, a lot of times people say, hey man, I made it here by myself, I made it out the mud, I got it out of here by myself, and I'm like, that's not actually true. No. Every To get to where we got to in life, everybody had help from somewhere, right. whether indirect or direct. Right, right, right. And we have to, we have to definitely uh, give respect and props to those people who uh, who got us to where we are. Because without them, we would be nothing. And we have to keep extending that energy uh, going forward, doing that for other individuals. Totally agree. Totally agree. It's it's a reason that I I pick Phil, you know, to do you know this, this ride along, this ride along like we in a cop program or something. <laughs> <laughs> Training day. <laughs> Nah, cause you know, I think Phil is a extraordinary person. You know, me and Phil have some of the best out of this world conversations. Definitely you know? out of this world. So, Phil, what's what's your biggest conspiracy theory? Um, I think my biggest conspiracy theory, and I have a lot of what we consider conspiracy theories, and I think the term conspiracy theory is just a divisive way. Of putting a label on a critical thinker. Okay. Because I believe all fiction came from some notion of fact. We're not just making stuff out of out of thin air. Right. Everything comes from something. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It merely transfers forms. So I would say my biggest um, 
my biggest conspiracy theory would definitely be that extraterrestrials do exist and they've always existed on earth and they're living amongst us right now okay okay now do you feel as though with your like your company name hybrids that some of us humans are actually hybrids of extraterrestrial beings i think we were definitely um created by extraterrestrial beings um through a grand experiment throughout the cosmos. And I think it's different um, variations of humanoids on this planet. And I think those, each one of these different cultures, different races could have been created by several different entities on right. this planet. Not only that, I think that um, there are other races of uh, beings that not only come from somewhere else, but actually came from Earth and they live in the interior of the Earth. The original name for Earth, uh, the Latin word is Terra. So extraterrestrial means someone not of Earth. Interterrestrial means someone that lives in the interior of the Earth. Right. So I truly believe that uh, beings live in the interior of the Earth. And this is dated throughout history, throughout different cultures, whether you, it's the indigenous Native Americans who um, said that they uh, experienced uh, different, uh, different communications as well as different... Uh, uh, different influences through beings that live in what we call present-day North America. Right, right, right. Now, do you have an idea or any thoughts on where these entrance points might be to access uh -oh. inner Earth? Uh-oh. Um, I definitely believe there are a couple uh, entrance points, like major entrance points. One is uh, in Antarctica. They're said right. to be a, a giant diameter circumference that you can enter into the interior of the Earth there. Um, I think there are also smaller points uh, that lead into different types of tunnels that uh, allow individuals to go into the interior of the Earth. Um, I think some of the, actually in the United States, I know some are in uh, Northern Africa, okay. um, as well as Europe. A lot of your ancient castles are built on um, on um, entrances that go into the interior of the Earth, as well as South America. Right. Uh, right. Bra Brazil uh, allegedly has some also. And a lot of this, what I'm, I'm saying, um, I've gotten from years of research. A lot of times people be like, well, how can you prove what you're saying is true? I've studied several books. The first book that actually got me on this wave was uh, Behold the Pale Horse. So Behold the Pale Horse was written in the 1990s. And it kind of gave way to a lot of uh, really uh, conscious and collective thought processes. And that book allowed for others to actually start making their own books, too. The guy who originally, uh, uh, the guy who wrote the book actually was um, was uh, murdered by the government. They tried right. one time, tried to uh, push him off a uh, push him off a cliff in California, and they succeeded the second time. Mm -hmm. But his his death wasn't in vain because it gave uh, leeway to other individuals uh, actually um, going up, going out, and um, doing their own research and actually thinking also and putting that pen to paper and writing their own books also. So I've read, I've, um, I've read several different uh, books from different individuals in the United States as well as the United Kingdom on the subject. And I would say present day right now, one of the forefronters of it is a gentleman by the name of Billy Carson. Billy Carson wrote a book uh, called uh, Decoding the Emerald Tablets. And the Emerald Tablets are just uh, the holy tablets that were... Um, implemented on earth in ancient times which a lot of present day religions come from okay. wow man that's a lot to yeah, digest this, this can go several different ways it can, right. we can go i-20 we can go 285 <laughs> it, it, it can't this 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 rabbit hole once you go down it it leads in so many different directions what i realized uh from doing all the research that i'll never know everything Right. But I will know a lot of what I want to because I'm attracting that certain type of energy. Right, right. And do you feel, you know, you get like backlash from yes. your peers yes. and, you know, Phil is losing his mind or, man, we, you know, we don't know what the hell Phil is talking about. I used to wonder why people hate the notion of extraterrestrial talk so much, especially, um, you know, growing up in religion, growing up in Christianity. I grew up in the Methodist church. I grew up in the Baptist church. And I was like, why do people hate this notion of aliens so much? But what I realized is humans are just conceited and arrogant. So right. if we feel like something can 
be uh, more advanced than us and can control us, we don't even want to think that that's even possible. Right. And, right. For, and for that reason, we um, we uh, tend to get mad at anybody who would challenge that. Right. When in actuality, if you look at a lot of the doctrines, they actually point towards extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials are mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament several different times, right. as well as different uh, humanoid beings on Earth, like even the Nephilim or the giants or the David and Goliath story, which right. was about giants. Those beings are real and they still live um, on the earth. Right, right. And you know, more recently, I, you ever heard about the story about the giant in, what, in, in Afghanistan that supposedly killed? Yeah, I did hear about that. They did testing on them or something, correct? Right, and they, the giant killed some of the, maybe one or two of the military personnel, but the military actually killed the giant wow and they took him off on a helicopter they said he was about like 12 feet or something yeah. with, with six fingers and six toes six toes yeah. red hair red beard and he had like uh, primitive weapons like a spear things mm. like that but they said man it was just like a real deal like movie encounter with like a giant like up in the mountains of Afghanistan, Afghanistan. and they said as uh, they walked through the path you know they were looking for the I guess the troops or whatnot they would see the bones of people and uh, military uniforms and whatnot so it was cannibalistic yeah so he was it, it wasn't just a random giant he's like been there been there for years and doing was his doing his thing like right. whoever came in that area probably never left Right, right. So I thought that was an interesting story. But you know, like you said, it's a rabbit hole. It's, it's a rabbit millions hole. Millions of stories you could come across. And, you know, it, it's up to you to determine if it's true or not. But, you well, know, I always kept my mind open. Like, I I loved, I was always, like, a fan of, like, the X-Files, uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Like, whatever, whatever could go left. Right. <laughs> I, I was a huge fan of it. And, but... I never had any experiences that made me, you know, uh, I guess open my eyes or third eye, yeah. you know. But did you ever, you know, experience anything that made you say, oh, shit? I've had several experiences where I knew and saw something was different. Um, I've seen um, what we would consider UFOs or unidentified flying objects, whether that be government government issue unidentified flying objects or something from outer space i've seen those about four to five times my first time ever seeing a ufo i was actually um in 2007 it's funny because this vehicle is a 2007 truck and in 2007 i was visiting a friend in chicago and on the flights back then you could be on a flight it was a friday night and nobody was on the flight maybe like 10 people on the flight that seats 80 to 90 people right so i look out the window as we were uh descending into the into uh chicago and it was kind of dark i look out the window and flying parallel to us was a silver sh cigar shaped vessel hmm. and i saw it clear as day it was literally flying parallel with the plane so i look over and i'm like nobody sees this nobody going to believe me nobody's actually sitting by me because guess what nobody's on this plane this one this one you can get on the flight for cheap nobody be on the plane they don't overbook you they don't double book you right and it was it, there was nobody i could tell right i look over and i see the uh the vessel cloak from the back to the front oh in slow motion and it went and it disappeared in slow motion signifying that it, it wanted to be seen it knew i would see it right part of that being because uh, in 2006 is when I actually finished the book, <laughs> Behold the Pearl Horse. Right. So I think a lot of times it this goes into a level of uh, uh, manifestation or what Hinduism calls the laws of attraction. Right. The more we um, put our minds on a certain energy, the more we end up focusing on that energy. Right. Ah, then a ladybug just flew in here. That's spiritual in itself. We're having this conversation. Right. We, we, we open it all types of pathways. <laughs> So yeah, that was my first time seeing one. My second time seeing one was actually, uh, I was at my rental property on the southern portion of Atlanta, and uh, I was there uh, with uh, one, my, one of my contractors, and they were shampooing all the carpets. Right. Somehow we we 
we ended up on the conversation of aliens. Right. He did not believe in aliens. He thought I was crazy. He was looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. No joke. Soon as I was about to pay him, I look up in the sky and I see a silver orb, circular orb. And I told him, I was like, yo, what is that? And he stated, I don't know what that is. I was like, you don't see that right there? I was like, it's too high to be a drone. It's, right. And it's too big and it's shiny. It's reflecting yeah. the sun. I can see something off of it. He was like, I don't know. I was like, I'm not saying it's a UFO. All I'm saying is it's something that I've never seen in this area. And, it's, mm. and it wouldn't let me take a picture of it. I tried to take a picture of whatever it was. I could not zoom in close enough to take a picture. And how big do you think this orb was? Man, from that from that distance, if I had to quantify it, it was it was roughly about maybe a thousand to two thousand feet high. Mm. And the only reason I can quantify that too is because I went skydiving in the past before, yeah. so I jumped fourteen thousand feet out of yeah. the plane, so I can kind of quantify that. Right. So when I looked up and saw it, I was amazed because it was so close, but I still couldn't take a picture of it. But it was big too, so the diameter of it, I would probably say maybe about. From that distance, maybe two to three hundred feet in in, in diameter, right. and um, yeah, so it was amazing. And he didn't he didn't say anything else. He was look he looks like he was shocked right. just by seeing it and me stating it. So in his mind, he had already like we just discussed. He just chalked it up as nope, not even even trying to think about that. Right. So that was the second time. The third time uh, that I saw a, a UFO was actually recently. My, um, it was in our neighborhood, in my neighborhood, at the beginning of the pandemic. Wow. My wife and kids and I were in the grass area in our neighborhood, and we were outside playing. We look up, blew my mind. As clear as day, I saw a, a, a UFO with green and red lights mm -hmm. circling around of it, flickering back and forth, and it was going in slow motion. All right. To put it even more retrospect, I saw two airplanes flying in different right. directions, not too far from the UFO. I look up, I tell my wife, hey, do you see this UFO? Yeah. She says, yes. I was like, you are not shot by this? She was like, it's 2020. Anything can happen. This is right when the, pandi the pandemic happened. So this was summer 2020. And she was like, anything is possible nowadays. So she saw, she saw and I saw the kids didn't see it because they were playing. They were too right. busy playing, so they couldn't even focus. Circular on. shape, disc shape. Circular, circular shape almost looked like it. It was a we. It was weird. It almost looked. It was flat on the top and the bottom, so mm -hmm. it almost looked like a sandwich. Okay. But it was brown with green and red lights flickering around it, mm -hmm. and it was moving in slow motion. It was moving so not slow. Not making a sound. Not making a sound. And it, it, then it eventually, I looked back up and it ended up cloaking too. It disappeared into the clouds. I didn't see it anymore. But I still saw the airplanes going around. Damn. So that was the third That was the uh, third time. The fourth time I saw a UFO. Two weeks after that experience, my wife is up late at night. I'm in a bed asleep. She says, oh my God, look out the window, look out the window. I was like, what? I look out the window, I see something defying all laws of physics, going yeah. fast as crap right. through, the, through uh, the sky, dark, and it was white. That's all I could see because it was going so fast. Right. Blew my mind. I'm like, what in the world is this? Going so fast. I was like, this is crazy. I was like, why are you shot? But I asked my wife, why are you shot this time? Right. She was like, because, I mean, it's just moving so fast. I was like, you weren't shot by the UFO two weeks ago. Right. She was like, yes, but now it's, I mean, it's twice in two weeks. This is crazy. So we saw that, and then I was like, that's amazing, went back to sleep. <laughs> so it doesn't even have that same effect no more? It, it still does, because these were different. Every UFO has been different. Neither, None of them have been the same. Every single one of them has been a different shape, has been a different size. Now I get to the fourth one. The fourth one is the most mind-blowing one. My family and I, November of last year, 2021, decided to take the kids to... Uh, take the kids to uh disney world in orlando right so we rent a, a giant suburban suv put the grandparents in there and we take two different vehicles so my, my in-laws are in one vehicle we're in, a, in in the suburban we drive down there to orlando we had a great time we stayed down there for four days at the airbnb and everything we drive back 
when we drive back from Orlando to Atlanta, we go through South Georgia and we cut through uh, 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 near Albany and Tifton, Georgia, mm-hmm. because we're going to Columbus to drop my uh, my, uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law off. All right. When we cut through there, really dark, we randomly see a, a, a runway on the side. It was a runway on the side of the road. The runway looks like an old grass field or something like that. Right. Um, so it didn't even look like it was active. We see something that looks like a triangle shaped object with lights all around it going in all different 360 degree directions. Right. When we see it, it starts bouncing, almost looks like it's bouncing off the ground. When it's bouncing, it's moving. It's moving in slow motion, but then it's moving and it keeps bouncing. My wife and I turned at the same time and said, what is that? Oh, my God, what is that? Mind you, we live in a technology age. Every single person in the car is on a, on a device, right. whether an iPad or a phone. Right. None of them saw it but me and my wife. <laughs> we was like, look up, look back. We were right. still driving. Nobody saw it. Everybody missed it but us. And that's because we, uh, part of it is because they were distracted. We were right. talking to each other. We weren't on any device, of course, because I'm driving. Yeah. And... Uh, because of that, we were able to see it. So that was the, uh, how many was that? One, that's two, about three. five. That's five. Yeah. So that's five times I've seen a UFO. I'm honestly jealous. <laughs> so this is the kicker. That five times I've seen a UFO. I don't tell people this story much. I never even. I don't think I've ever even said this story on camera before. But as far as abduction goes, all right. So you about to get really get into it so yeah this is where it really gets real so um pretty much abduction stories you know a lot of people think people that have abduction stories that were uh some type of mental case some type of psychological trauma or something like that me man you could hey go around we in atlanta we in atlanta y'all so (laughs) so pretty much um the, uh, the first time I felt like I was abducted, I was six or seven years old in my parents' house. And when I was in the house, um, I remember a light. I remember that light flashing into my room. And I, I get bits and pieces of me being on a ship and being naked and being examined. I remember anal- them analyzing me. I don't remember seeing their faces. I do remember... Um, I do remember uh, screaming because I was terrified. I remember screaming, being terrified. Don't remember anything else. All I got was bits and pieces later on. This was after it happened. I couldn't remember if it happened or not. And I remember, but I do remember waking up those nights and being terrified and looking out the window and closing the window. And it was weird. It was really, really weird. Fast forward to the future. That's when I was six or seven years old. In 2006, I moved into my townhouse. As soon as I graduated college, I moved into a townhouse, purchased my first townhouse in Atlanta, moved in by myself. I remember a state of what we would call paralysis and the meaning a state of I can move. I couldn't I couldn't um, I couldn't speak. Nothing was was happening. I don't remember leaving the house, but I remember beings being around me and those beings actually uh analyzing what was going on and uh with that those uh i couldn't see what the beings were and this was 2006 the first situation happened when i was six years old so that was like 1989 or something like that right so you have a pretty big window of when i felt like i was visited by extraterrestrials right so later on I went to what's to one of my friends. His mom is a nurse, and she does what's called quantum healing sessions. She studied the teachings of Dolores Cannon. Quantum healing sessions, what they do is they put you under hypnosis, and they access your uh, they access your uh, your higher self, and your higher self access your celestial uh, beings or uh, spiritual guides or what we would consider God. And through that experience, before the experience, I asked questions. She said, ask five questions that you will want to be answered. So one of the questions was, hey, did I really get abducted by extraterrestrials? Right. And in, in the, uh, in the uh, session, 
they put me under him she put me under hypnosis and I was still coherent but not fully coherent so I could, I was still self-aware but I kind of knew what was going on but didn't really know what was going on but in one one of the things I said was um <laughs> one of the things I said in the session was that I did get visited and two of the beings that I got visited by one was reptilians which is uh, a form of extraterrestrials from uh, the Draco constellation. Reptilians, uh, allegedly uh, 1800 uh, uh, reptilians live on the earth. They can change uh, forms, they can mimic other races, they can mi mimic other humans. Um, the other race was a race I wasn't aware of. They weren't what we would consider the short gray aliens with the big black eyes. But they were like gray humanoids. They almost looked like, if you ever, if you're a fan of Marvel, they look like the Silver Surfer. Okay. Okay. So that was the other race of beings that was analyzing me also. So those are the races that I was analyzed by, which are the the I don't I don't know their actual names, but the ones that look like the Silver Surfer, gray, mm -hmm. and they're not. And there's two different types of grays too. You have your gray shorts with the black eyes, and then you have your gray tall with kind of um, beady eyes. These right. more so look like the silver surfer though. Okay. And that's wh who was accessed in my uh, quantum healing session. Then we fast forward again. The, the quantum healing session was about three or four years ago, I think. Fast forward uh, to last year, 2021. This year, of course, is 2022. Summer 2021, we did a lot of traveling. In my in my subconscious, in my dreams, I kept saying to myself, hey, I really just want to see an extraterrestrial humanoid that looks in, in, in conscious form. So where I'm not being abducted, but just seeing one in conscious form, like me being completely awake. Right. The family and I drove to Charleston, South Carolina. We spent three days in Charleston, South Carolina, enjoying ourselves, going to the beach and everything. We were on the strip in downtown Charleston. I'm in the back of my family. They're walking in front of me. I look up and I, my, before I saw this individual, I said to myself, something's not right. Like right. whoever this is about to approach me, they're not human. Right. I look up and it was, uh, what he looked, he looked like a six, two to six, three white male, but he had no hair. He had no mustache, no beard. Mm -hmm. He had no eyebrows, no no nothing. So he looked like a, a person that we would consider has a high form of electrolysis. I forget what the uh, I forget what the diagnosis for it is, but people right. that can't grow hair. Right. But he had no he had no hair on his body at, at all. I didn't see any on his face, head. He had shorts on, legs, nothing. He was dressed like almost kind of hippie type. He had on like a t-shirt, some shorts, right. some Nikes. His eyes were twitching like really, really fast, like right. twitching faster than normal. Almost kind of how you see um, individuals with what we call albinoism. His eyes mm -hmm. were twitching like that, but they were red. So his eyes were like really, really red. And I looked up at him and he looked right at me and he couldn't, he didn't stop staring at me. He looked straight at me. He didn't look at anybody else in my family, only me. And I went, I, I was shocked because I knew he was extraterrestrial. Right. He looks like, the same extraterrestrials that people say the men in black look like. Okay. So the men in black from the movie Men in Black actually come from um, uh, a form of uh, uh, extraterrestrials that actually do monitor our Earth. The energy I got from this individual, he felt it felt not positive, not negative, but almost like conflicted, almost like humans. Like when you get in, not like oh. You know, the biggest misconception we think of somebody being from another planet, they're going to be really bad or they're going to be really good. Right. They could just really be just as complex as humans. Right. And that's the energy I felt from him. But he looked just like the indivi individuals from the men in black or what we would call in secret, secret government, Majestic 12. So Majestic 12 was created in the 19, I can't remember the, the year. It was either the 1960s or the 70s. And they were created in order to study extraterrestrial technologies as, as well as to start communicating with uh, extraterrestrials. And all this derives from the Eisenhower administration in America. So that's our uh, secret government in order to monitor extraterrestrials. 
Uh, Europe, of course, Russia has one. Germany has one, as well as China. They have uh, one that they've been doing the same thing with. And I truly believe, like most of these uh, governments, are have been consorting with different species of extraterrestrials uh, for uh, since our since. Uh, since the establishment of the governments within the last couple hundred years but of course we've been if you read holy tablets and biblical texts we've been consorting with extraterrestrials for uh, since our since our creation right I feel like Americans not I feel like I've researched that uh, the Americans we've been consorting with the reptilians and the grays uh, and the short grays most of the short grays that people have seen are actually not even um, organic matter they're actually clones mm. they're clones of the actual uh real short grays and they they live in the interior of the earth too as well as on the moon okay and that gets into a whole another topic too the other the other uh the other government uh that uh, has been consorting is germany of course germany hitler part of hitler's uh, uh thing with creating a master race is he was trying to mimic well, uh the nordics the Nordics are white hair, white white people with uh, blonde, blonde hair and blue eyes. So he was mimicking because he was influenced by that race. Most people who actually came in contact with Hitler said he was actually a quote unquote really nice guy. He was a nice guy because he was really calm, but he had an agenda going on. Right. The method in which he was trying to do was, uh, and that goes into a whole other topic. But he was he was trying to kill all people in order to create a master race. Um. So he was still a, a mercenary. He was just really nice at what, when he was doing all the, all the murder and killing spree. Right. Um, the other uh, cultures that have uh, experienced, um, and, it, and it shows in their, in their in their not only in their religions but their culture also is um, the governments. The governments. Um, uh, China also consorts with a lot of the draconian culture also, and that's why if you notice. Uh, the dragon is really big. The dragon is really a big symbol right, in right. China. And mainly it's because of the serpent. The serpent representing the reptilians, which represents the draconian. Right. And you have different draconians, too. Most of the draconians that are on Earth would be considered uh, outcasts from their home worlds. Because their home solar system is comprised of several different planets with different... Uh, with different uh, uh, types of draconian reptilians also right. and they come in different forms they come in short green people like you see yoda mm -hmm. in star in star wars okay or they come uh five feet ten five feet eight to six feet two um looks like a reptilian creature and the bigger ones are actually much larger they're they're uh 12 to 15 feet tall and those are the ones with wings or what we would consider the stories of gargoyles and all that kind okay. of stuff comes from okay so those tend to what they they hide themselves more, or they, they typically the, they, those so. typically live in the interior of the Earth, and they live on other planets also. Okay. And they, uh, um, you know, right now it's the bit the, the biggest thing in um, the news. One of the biggest things is the space talk. Space right. talk with Elon Musk. Right. Elon Musk is trying to get to Mars. We're actually already on Mars. Right. We've shown picture. If you look at astrological pictures from the last twenty years. Um, you will now see what's called clouds forming on the surface of Mars, meaning somebody's terraforming the planet. I feel that our government is terraforming the, the exterior of the planet. We already have colonies up there, right. and we have, uh, and we have, uh, uh, and we, now we're starting to form an atmosphere. If you got clouds, that means you can have water. Right. If you got water, you're already starting to see green vegetation. It doesn't look like the red planet we once saw back in the last century. But the thing about Mars is Mars is actually already inhabited by different beings of humanoids. Those humanoids live in the interior of the planet. Anytime uh, advanced species gets a planet, they typically don't live on the exterior of the planet. For one, you can't control the atmosphere as much. If you were to go to war with somebody else, you're not as protected because you're more open. Right. So in the interior of the planet, there are several different species of humanoids um, that lived there, and this was um, this was told by uh, the book uh, the Committee of 300 by by uh, various CIA uh, and uh, space agency retirees and what we would call whistleblowers. Uh, one gentleman even said a couple years ago, 
he was talking about the uh, the program in which they teleported back and forth to Mars. The program was called the Pegasus program. The program was built in the 1970s. In the Pegasus program, they played with uh, time travel and uh, and uh, 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 teleportation. So he said they would teleport to Mars for an hour meeting or teleport from one part of the planet to, 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 the, to the next. He said in that, in that, uh, that, and this is on YouTube also. He said in that YouTube special that they would, um, that when they, when he went to Mars, he saw things that were amazing and extraordinary and that were frightening to him. So he was seeing all types of different beings. Hmm. He even stated how some of the beings looked. One of the beings look, he described them to look like Gumby. They look gold, but they look like Gumby, like elastic kind of beings. <laughs> Another being he said was um, different beings were, uh, they almost look like Anglo-Saxons, but they had red eyes or white people and red hair. Mm. And then he saw people with blue skin and uh, uh, blue hair also. The most, the, the most, uh, shocking part about this now the gentleman the CIA whistleblower in his 70s who, who made this video the most shocking thing about it was that he said that the people that ran the interior of the planet were a race of black beings I was like black beings and the, and the woman interviewing him said black beings you mean like olive skin like brown skin like kind of like my complexion yeah. he was like no like jet black like space like jet black so come to find out these beings actually come from um, uh, my, my, my same friend's mom who did the quantum healing session on me that allowed me to access me being abducted she, uh, uh, he had a dream and I'm going to let him tell his story you should probably interview him also Okay. but uh, he had a dream also and the dream showed these black beings and I told him yo I know the black beings you're talking about the whistleblower just talked about it he yeah. said I didn't know anything about them yeah. he said they showed themselves to me in a dream and they come from the solar system Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is a binary solar system, meaning it has two two stars or two suns. Mm -hmm. So in Alpha Centauri, he, he said they showed him his planet. And he said, why haven't y'all revealed y'all before? They said it wasn't their time. So now they're going to reveal themselves. They're starting to reveal themselves a lot more. They even, they even mimicked them. One of the guys in uh, the movie Jupiter Ascending with Channing Tatum. So if y'all go check out Jupiter Center with Chan Channing Tatum, it's an amazing movie. It's a lot of fiction in it. Most movies we see, whether it's Marvel, whether it's any Star Trek, Star Wars, most of these things um, have about 80 to 90 percent fiction, mm -hmm. but you get 10 or 15 percent truth in it because right. that's typically the basis of it. Right. So. A lot of what you see in uh, Marvel mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. Like I said, it's uh, 10 percent, 10 percent truth, 90 percent fiction. Especially with the new stuff they're coming out with the Eternals. The Eternals really do a good job showing uh, ancient beings as well as extraterrestrials. Right. They're just p putting them in a human format so that we can understand ancient uh, and c celestial being knowledge. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I truly believe that the world as we know it is just a, um, it's a microcosm of what's actually going on. And that's just, a lot of what I'm talking about is just the physical, it's not even the spiritual or the right. metaphysical aspect of it. So it's a pretty powerful universe that we live in if we want to know more about it. But a lot of people there, they're, I think their purpose on earth is not to know more. They don't want to know more. And right. that's fine too. That, that, that way they can focus on what their life's path is. All of us have a different life path. Right. And uh, we just need to focus on what we were meant to do. But if you want to seek a higher level of consciousness, hey, I'm all for it. Right, 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 man. So I, you gave us a whole bunch. Can't give it, give, give it all to us, right? Uh -huh. We gotta have to wait till some more episodes. But uh, with all this extraterrestrials that you've been dealing with, you know, things that you've seen, your experiences, you gotta show me, man. What kind of weapon? do you have to protect yourself uh, so from, from these, these these dracos and you know what uh, and and <laughs> these uh white guys with no hair man you got to show me what you got so what's funny about that too is higher extraterrestrials they actually um operate off of plasma energy they don't even mess with bullets bullets and ammo everything we do on earth is really primitive but the government hasn't allowed us to uh unveil that technology so me personally
I have a 380 that I keep on my person and in the vehicle at uh, all times. So right now the clip is not in. Um, the practice rounds are actually in. These are these are practice rounds for shooting at the gun range. Okay. And um, this is what I keep on myself, my person, to protect me and my family. Um, uh, I like it because it's small. It fits in the, it fits in the car. I can fit on my person also, and I can easily um, whip it out if need be at uh, any given time, any given moment of uh, of, uh, of scarcity, right. to say the least. Right. So this is what I keep on me, three eighty. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you say even with these bins, they won't do nothing. We we better off throwing some ice water. Uh, with a higher end beings, uh, if you have, uh, if you have conquered or mastered platonic solids and knowing how platonic solids works, uh, you would be able to easily manipulate plasma energy in a lot better. Plasma energy would easily be able to block bullets. So this is a really primitive. And then a lot of what we do is we slaughter and murder on our planet. On other uh, plasma energy, I can stun somebody, put them down, subdue them, and then they'll be, they, they won't die. But a lot of what we have on this planet is literally made for us to slaughter each other because it's uh, influenced by negative or low vibration entities, which is our governments. All right. All right. Another, All right. another thing I keep on me also is just in case we want to get up in person, I keep a knife. So I study martial arts. I think everybody should study martial arts because martial arts is pretty dope. Spiritual. I study Jeet Kune Do. And I study uh, Capoeira. And uh, this is for protection also. Like I said, I'm actually an extremely nonviolent person. Right. But I, I, but I believe in protecting myself. Right, 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 right. And that's what I think everybody should. We have the right to uh, bear arms. And I think we should adhere to that right. But with that right becomes responsibility. We should all always think about our action and what we're going to do because your action can mean somebody's last action. So what can we do to make sure that we're not uh, operating out of emotion in these situations and operating more off spiritual intuition and logistics, a combination of those two things. So, Excellent point. Uh, I greatly appreciate you in the conversation. Let the folks know, you know, what's your, you know, your, your social media, your company, you know, just give them a recap of how they can get in touch with you. So, yeah, once again, uh, Philip Davis, uh, owner of Hybrid Humans, INC, which is a 501c3 that teaches tumbling and does stunt work on film. Um, you can reach us on Instagram at Hybrid Humans INC or Facebook at Hybrid Humans. Um, let us know. We accept donations. Uh we accept investments. We actually do investments and donations also. So we uh, are, are big at influencing positively the acrobatic nature of kids in the community as well as adults. We teach adults also. So, All right. And for our audience, whatever, any other questions or topics y'all want, you know, Philip to cover, you know, hit, hit us up, leave a comment, let us know. Philip, if you got one last thing you want to tell the world, what would it be? Vibrate higher. That's right. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace. Two in the pink, one in the stink. <laughs> Two dope boys in the ridge line.